Hello friends, welcome to lecture series on matrix analysis with applications. So our today talk is basis and dimension. So we have already discussed about vector space and subspace of a vector space V. Now what do we mean by basis of a vector space and how can we calculate its dimension? So let us discuss these things in this lecture. So first of all what is a basis? Now a set S which is given by u1, u2, u3 up to un of vectors is a basis of V if it has the following two properties. Number 1, S is linearly independent. So the first property is you consider a, set, yes, uh, a subset of uh, V. Okay. Now this subset of V is will be a basis of this V if uh, number 1 this is linearly independent and number 2 the span of S generates V. A span of S generates V means span of S is equal to V. That means by the linear combination of the elements of S we are getting this vector space V. So, we will discuss few examples based on this then things will be clear. Now a basis is a minimal spanning set that is linearly independent number 1. Okay. It is a minimal, minimal spanning tree spanning set that is linearly independent and number 2 a basis is the largest linearly independent set that spans V because if you are having uh, more one more element in uh, this uh, basis then it will become linearly dependent. So, it is the largest linearly independent set that spans V that generates V. Okay. Now, uh, now the first uh, theorem is let V be a vector space which is spanned by a finite set of vectors u1, u2 up to ua. Okay. Then any independent set of vectors in V is finite and contains no more than m elements. Now what I want to say that uh, suppose S is equal to suppose you have a set of elements u1, u2 up to ua and this spans V. Okay. Then any independent set of vectors in V is finite and contains no more than m elements. That means if you take any independent set of uh, vectors in V, the number of element in that set will not exceed m. So uh, that means uh, if you take any set S which contain more than m elements is always linearly independent is always linearly dependent. Indirectly if you want to say that uh, if a independent set is finite and contains no more than m element that means if we take any set any subset S of V contains more than m more than m elements that will be always linearly dependent. Okay. So, let us suppose H is that S is that set or uh, say uh, T is that set. Okay. T is such a set such a set means containing elements or vectors more than m. Okay. So, let us suppose T is equals to say you can take V1, V2 up to Vn where n is greater than m. Now, now what to show? We have to show that this T is linearly dependent. Okay. So, first of all since span of this set, since span of this set generates V and T is a subset of V, of course T is a subset of V. So, that means every element of T will be, uh, will be in some linear combination of elements of S. Okay. So, we can write uh, this uh, Vj as uh, A1j u1 plus A2j u2 and so on up to Amj ua. 
where j is varying from 1 to n. That means, it is equal to summation uh, i varying from 1 to it, it is it can be written as i varying from 1 to m a i j u j a i j u i okay. and j is varying from 1 to m. Okay. Now, in order to show that this set is linearly independent, take some linear combination of this put it equal to 0 and try to show that not all, uh, not all scalars are 0. This means, this set is L d. Okay. So, so, let us take set us let us take some linear combination of these vectors. Okay, let us say take some linear combination of these elements. Now, it is it is uh, you see that it is uh, summation alpha it is summation alpha j v j where j is varying from 1 to n. So, this is summation j varying from 1 to n and uh, this uh, v j's are nothing but given by this expression here. So, this can be written as summation i from 1 to m this is uh, alpha j is as it is and this is a i j u i. Now, this can be rearranged and can be written as summation i varying from 1 to m summation j varying from 1 to n this is a i j alpha j into u i. Okay. Now, if it if this is equal to 0 means this is equal to 0. Now, if this is equal to 0 means this is equal to 0 means this is a system of linear homogeneous equations. You have to find alpha alpha j's alpha j's are unknowns u j u i s are known a i j's are known alpha j alpha j's are unknown. So, it is it is this is this is something like a x equal to 0 type, where x is alpha j's okay, it is to find out all other things are known. Now, for this system we are having how many alpha j, j's are varying from 1 to n. So, number of unknowns are n and number of equations are m and n is more than m. So, this system will be having more than one solution I mean infinitely many solutions and if it is having infinitely many solution this means there will be some non zero solution also. So, we have shown that this set of vectors v 1, v 2, v 3 up to v n of t are linearly dependent. Hence, we have shown that if we are ha if we are having a set S which spans V which spans V then the linear then the linearly independent set of uh, V is always finite and will not contain more than more than m elements. Okay? And now based on this we have another result if V is a finite dimensional uh, vector space. Now, what do you mean by dimension? Dimension is simply number of elements in a vector space. I mean, number of elements the basis of vector space. Okay. Then any two bases of V have same number of elements. You see, suppose we have vector space V. Okay, and uh, say uh, say B one is one basis, which consists of say m number of elements. So, so and another basis B 2 which con contains say n number of elements. So, we have to show that m is equal to n. Okay. Now, you see here since uh, span since this is a basis this means span of uh, B 1 will be V because we know that basis is a set which is linearly independent and spans is equal to v span of that set equal to v. Okay. Now, span of this set is equal to v and this is this b 2 is linearly independent. So, by the previous result we can say that uh, n will be less than equal to m. Now, similarly b 2 is also the basis 
B2 is a basis, though that means span of B2 will be equal to V. Now, span of B2 equal to V and B1 is linearly independent, that means M will be less than equal to N by the previous result. So, from these two, we can easily say that M equal to N. So, what I want to say that if V has a finite dimension, okay, then it, it may be having infinitely many bases, but number of element in each basis are same. Okay number of elements in the basis are same and that is called its dimension. Now, say say you consider R 3. In R 3, if you take uh, E 1 as 1 0 0, E 2 as 0 1 0 and E 3 as 0 0 1, then this is a basis of R 3 and is also called a standard basis of R 3. Now, you can easily see, you see, if you take, if you take vector space as R 3 over the real field of course, and you are taking a set which is uh, 1 0 0, 0 1 0 and 0 0 1. Now, first of all this set is linearly independent, it is very easy to show. You take linear combination of this set, linear combination elements of this set, put it equal to 0 and this implies alpha 1 equal to alpha 2 equal to alpha 3 equal to 0 that means uh, set is Li. Now, secondly we have to show that span of S equal to V. Okay. Now, a span of S is equal to V that means uh, any element of uh, V can be expressed as linear combination of elements of S. You see we have to show that span of S equal to V. It is very clear that the span of S is a subset of V, it is obvious because V is a vector space. A span means linear combination of elements of S, okay. because it is a vector space, so it must be close back to addition and scalar multiplication. So, that means this uh, span will be automatically be a subset of V. Now, we have to show that uh, V is a subset of uh, span of S to show that span of S is equal to V. So, take, take an element say x, y, z in V and we have to show that this x, y, z can be expressed as some linear combination of elements of S. Then only we can say that it is in a span of S. So, this x, y, z can is clearly expressed as x times 1 0 0 plus y times 0 1 0 plus z times 0 0 1. These are alpha, beta, gamma scalars and that means belongs to a span of S and that means V is a subset of a span of S and hence implies a span of S is equals to V. So, we can say that this S is a, is a basis of this vector space R 3 and this is also called a standard basis of R 3. Okay. The second example is similarly we can go for R n if you take R n then you can take E 1 as 1 0 1 0 0 0 up to I mean uh, an term similarly E 2 and E n and uh, E 1 E 2 up to E n is a basis of R n similarly and is also called standard basis for R n. Similarly, if you take P n which is the consisting of all the polynomials of degree less than equal to n over the field f and you take a set 1 x x square up to x keep x s to power n is a basis for P n and is also called a standard basis for P n. Okay, this is also very simple to show. If you take you see, if you take uh, this set which is 1 x x square and so on up to x is to power n, you are taking P n over f vector space. Now, first in order to show that it is linearly independent, you take a linear combination of uh, linear combination of this set, put it equal to 0. Now, this 0 can be written as 0 plus 0 x and so on up to 0 x raised to power n. Now, when it will be hold for every x, this equal to this will hold for every x only when all alpha is are 0. So, this implies Li. Now, in order to show that span of this is equal to V, you take an arbitrary element in V, okay. you take any polynomial say uh, a n say you take 
a naught x raised to power n plus a 1 x, x raised to power n minus 1 and so on a naught in V and this element can be written as this is a n okay, plus a n this element can be written as a naught times first plus I mean this element can be written as you can see a naught a naught times this uh, vector a n times the previous vector and so on a n times the first vector. So, we have shown that this element can be written as linear combination of elements of s hence, hence span of s generates v that means it is a basis of v. Now, similarly, if you consider a matrix of order all matrix of orders 2 cross 2 over a real field and you take a uh, sub, uh, subset a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4 where a 1 is this, a 2 is this, a 3 is this and a 4 is this that is a standard basis of uh, this uh, vector space and this is this will this will be a basis because first of all it is linearly independent second you take uh, any any element any matrix of order 2 cross 2 okay, that can be expressed as linear combination of a 1, a 2, a 3 and a 4. Now, uh, now in this problems which are the following subset s form basis for a given vector space v say you take first example. Okay. The first example is you are taking s as 2 comma 1 0 comma minus 1 and here v is uh, r 2 over the real field. So, we have to see whether it will constitute a whether it will constitute a uh, basis for this vector space or not. So, first of all we have to see whether these vectors are linearly independent or not number 1. So, take linear combination of these vectors put it equal to 0 0. So, this implies 2 alpha 1 and alpha 1 minus alpha 2 equal to 0 0. So, this implies alpha 1 equal to alpha 2 equal to 0. So, this means L i. So, first property hold that means this set is L i. The second property is the second property is the span of this must be equal to v. So, that means you take any x y in v. So, there must exist some alpha beta in uh, field such that this x y can be expressed as linear combination of linear combination of these vectors. So, let us try to find those. So, let x y is equals to alpha times 2 1 plus uh, beta times 0 minus 1. So, this implies x is equals to 2 alpha and y is equals to alpha minus beta. So, this implies x alpha is x by 2 and uh, y is x by 2 minus beta or beta is x by 2 minus y. So, here we can write as this x y as x by 2 times 2 1 plus x by 2 minus y times 0 comma minus 1. So, for every x y in V, we have find alpha and beta such that every x y can be expressed as linear combination of uh, these two vectors you change x and y you change x and x and y you will get you will get these multipliers or these scalars correspondingly for which this x y can be expressed as linear combination of these two vectors so what we have shown we have shown that we have shown that span of s is equal to v i mean we have shown that any x y can be expressed as linear combination of elements of s and hence hence uh, we can say that this is a basis of v. The second example is you have taken these vectors, these vectors uh, I mean these uh, subset of v and we have to see whether it will constitute a uh, sub subspace I mean it will constitute a basis for this p 2 or not. So, uh, how we will show again? So, let us try to prove this if it is. So, you take x first vector x minus 1 second is x square plus x minus 1, the third is x square minus x plus 1. Okay. Here this is uh, p 2 over r. Now, first of all if it is a basis of this p 2 then it must be linearly independent. So, first we will see whether it is linearly linear independent or not. So, take linear combination of these vectors. 
okay x plus 1 equal to 0. So, now you collect the like terms you see the power of x square here is there no term of x square here it is beta here it is gamma. So, beta plus gamma must be 0 okay all the all the coefficients must be 0 because it is equal to 0 and the coefficient x is alpha plus beta minus gamma should be 0 and the constant term is minus alpha minus beta plus gamma is equal to 0. Now, from here you can you get beta equal to minus gamma when you substitute beta equal to minus gamma here it is alpha is equal to 2 gamma. Now, when you substitute alpha as minus alpha as uh, 2 gamma here and beta as gamma. So, this is uh, automatically satisfied. Okay. So, this means this means it has many solutions. So, there is a non-zero solution also say say if you if you put gamma equal to 1. So, alpha equal to 2 and beta equal to minus 1 and if you take if you take 2 x minus 1 plus minus 1 times x square plus x minus 1 plus 1 times x square minus x plus 1. So, what it is? it is minus x square plus square cancel out minus x plus x minus x minus x so minus 2 x plus 2 x cancel out it is plus 1 plus 1 2 minus 2 cancel 0. So, th this means what this means L d because because there are non zero scalars which is uh, whose linear combination equal to 0 okay. and that means it is not a basis of V because for basis it, it must be linearly independent. Okay. Similarly, we can show for the other two also that whether it will be a uh, subspaces uh, I mean basis or not. For example, if you see the third example now this one can be written as sin square x plus cos square x that is this one is the linear combination of these two elements. So, so this set is L d. So, this will not be a basis of this vector space. Okay. Now, for a basis for a subspace find a basis for a subspace u of v in the following cases. Okay. Now, in these problems we have to find the basis. Now, the first is the first is you take x 1 x 2 x 3 in R 3 such that 2 x 1 plus x 2 equal to 0 and x 1 minus 3 x 2 plus x 3 equal to 0 in R 3. So, uh, how we can find this? So, here we are taking all x 1 x 2 x 3 in R 3 such that 2 x 1 plus x 2 equal to 0 and x 1 minus 3 x 2 plus x 3 equal to 0. So, so this will this is a uh, subspace of this vector space V this is very clear we can show it uh, because uh, it satisfy um, closure property with respect to addition and scalar multiplication. Now, we have to find out if it is a uh, subspace. So, it must be having some basis. So, how can you find out the basis of this uh, uh, subspace of this V? So, how can you find it? Let us see. Now, here x 2 is equals to minus 2 x 1 from this equation. Now, from this equation if you take uh, x 1 and substitute x 2 as minus 2 x 1 here it is plus 6 x 1 plus x 3 equal to 0. So, this implies x 3 is equal to minus 7 x 1. So, this set is x 1 is x 1, x 2 is minus 2 x 1 and x 3 is minus 7 x 1. So, this is basically x 1 times 1 minus 2 minus 7 where, where x 1 belongs to R. This is basically u. Okay. So, pick out a linearly independent set which generates this set that will be the basis. So, we can say that basis is simply 1 minus 2 minus 7 is a basis of W. In fact, in fact any alpha times any x 1 times this vector is a basis you see this is this is L i and if you take alpha times this. So, this generates the entire u. 
So, hence this is the basis of this vector, uh, this subspace u. So, what is the dimension of this subspace? Dimension of this subspace is 1. And this can also this can also be computed like this. You see, here here it is an R three. And how many equations? How many independent equations we are having? Two. So three minus two. So dimension will be one. Okay. The next example is. The next example is, uh, you see, you are taking all the polynomials p in p two such that p dash zero equal to zero. It is clearly a subspace, and now what? What to find? Its basis. P two or real field. Okay. So, uh, so let us write uh, this uh, this p as a dot x square plus a one x plus a two belongs to P two such that uh, derivative is derivative at zero equal to zero. That means uh, what is the derivative of this? It is two x a naught plus a one. This is the derivative of this. And p dash at zero is zero, so this implies a one equal to zero. Okay. So a one equal to zero means what? A naught x square plus a two. We are uh, a naught a two a naught a two are real numbers. So basically, u is this set. All uh, a naught x square plus a two in P two such that a naught a two are in real numbers. So how to find out the basis of this? This is very easy. You see, you can write this as a naught times x square plus uh, a two times one. That is uh, one comma x square will be the basis of this. Because you see, one and x square are linearly independent. One cannot be expressed as alpha times x square, or x square cannot be expressed as alpha times one. Number one and number two. If you take a linear combination of these two vectors, one and x square, it generates a not x square plus a two. All such vectors. So it is the basis of this subspace, and the dimension of this is two. Okay, this is not the only basis. you can you can find out uh, infinitely many bases but the set must be li and it should generate entire subspace okay the last example here is consider all matrices of order 2 cross 2 such as trace of m is 0 you see here vector space we are taking as m of order 2 cross 2 over r and uh, subspace we are taking as all matrices of order 2 cross 2 Such that trace of uh, m is trace of a is zero. So basically, we are taking all x, y, uh, z, w in m of order two cross two, such that x plus w equal to zero. Trace is what? Some more diagonal elements. So this is this is basically uh, all x, y, z. You can write it minus x here because x plus w is zero in m of order two cross two. We are x, y, z in R. So this can be written as x times one zero zero minus one, y times zero one zero zero, and z times zero zero one zero. So you can write uh, this set as uh, set as one zero zero minus one, zero one zero zero, and zero zero one zero. This will be the Basis of this u, because first is this is linearly independent, and this the linear combination of this generates the entire u. So this will be the basis of this uh, subspace u. So hence we have seen that how to find out a subspace of a how to find out a basis of a subspace, and how we can see that uh, that uh, uh, that a given set. is a basis of vector space or not so thank you